Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before I dive to this lesson, I'd like to give all honor and all glory and all praise to do to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in the name of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Kwakadash, double eyes, great minister, elder, apostle, teacher, or well. Peace and salutation to the hopeful elect that scattered abroad across the four winds of this planet that's doing all things, the souls of Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. And the holy shall want to the Seraquathium that's out there resting their husbands being a pillar of rest. Keep doing so, okay? All right, so this lesson, as you can see right here, is entitled, You Have to Keep Up the Good Fight. And the reason why I'm doing this lesson is because um, uh, you don't want to get weak in this truth, man. You got to continue to pray to the Lord to give you strength in these last times, in these last days, man. Because, hey, the Lord said cleave unto him so he can... Uh, uh, cleave unto him so he can uh, increase you at the last end, man. Okay, because when you uh, getting too too weak minded, you start doubting. You know that demon of doubt start coming upon you. You start uh, uh, having faith. You start you start um, you know unbelieving. You know you start getting to that 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 uh, that that um, old man spirit, man. You start um, going back into the world again and stuff like that and you can't be doing it okay you gotta you must continue to fight the good fight and i speak this to myself and i speak this to the uh to you sister akium and you aquatium that's out there to who they may be okay because at the end of the day when you start getting that moment of weakness you got to check yourself pray to the lord to give you strength okay so let me get that precept real quick concerning that okay spirit that we are me and the brothers are already in a uh book of Sirach, but you know let, let me get this it's the book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1 through 3 and it says my son if thou come to serve the lord prepare thy soul for temptation right so hey when you come to serve the lord hey prepare yourself to be tried man prepare yourself to go through things okay because hey the lord is going to put you through trials okay because hey gold is tried in the uh fire man okay the Lord is trying to sharpen his people up, okay? He is trying to strengthen us, okay? And when you see a little bit of adversity come, you can't be getting weak-minded, you know? And Lord forbid that, you know, when adversity and tribulation come, we we are those people that get weak-minded. Lord forbid that, okay? Lord willing, we have that number to stay strong through those times, man. So, kind, you know? Um, so, like, put my phone on uh, airplane mode, so... Nobody called me as I do in this lesson. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in a time of trouble. Right. So, hey, set thy heart aright. Set thy heart on these scriptures. Set your heart on your heart by Shimei Shah, man. Because at the end of the day, when you don't have your heart set upon the things to come and the beautiful, beautiful, the beautifulness of it to come, you know, and the things that are uh, are going to come to pass, then, hey, you going, you, you going, you going to uh, burn out, man. Okay. You 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 gonna be that candle that loses its wax, and you gonna uh you gonna eventually burn out, burn yourself out, man. Okay, you got to continue to endure all things. Okay, you can't just let let things like you your um you can't let such things like oh man my car got repo man oh man no, I can't do this you can't let certain things like that get to you man. Okay, because the Lord is just trying you, your faith out, man. It's just testing you, okay, seeing where your heart is at, okay? It ain't a thing for the Lord to give you something back, man, okay? Find little loopholes for you, man, okay? So, Ken, uh, verse 3, <clears throat> uh, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the last end, right? So, cleave unto your heart by Shimei Shai. Okay, because there's benefits to it. Because when you when you cleave unto your Habba Shimia Shah, hey, you you will be increased at your last end. Because what do the scriptures say? Uh he that uh, exalt himself shall be a base, and he that that is a base shall be exalted. So those that's already in a humble, contrite spirit, hey, the Lord gonna exalt those, man. Those that cleave unto him in humility, you know, and truth and sincerity, the Lord is going to exalt them. Okay. Not your everyday regular jakes, man. Okay, that that uh that try to that's trying to make it in this world. The Lord is not going to. It's not dealing with them. He's only dealing with the lowly and the meek of the earth, man. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Verse four. I'm gonna get this too, and it says I'm gonna give four and five. Slock you. 
And it says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Right. So, hey, when when that uh, tribulation come upon you, 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 you uh, start feeling, you know, you know, you, you start feeling worried. Hey, whatever is brought upon you, man, take it cheerfully, man. Take it on the chin. Because, hey, not, not, nobody said everything in this truth is going to be uh, all smooth, man. A smooth road. No, this is a bumpy, uh, a bumpy, rocky road, man. Okay? This road is, this truth is not supposed to be easy. Okay? This truth is not for the faint-hearted. Okay? Because the scriptures say, enter ye in the straight gate. Okay? Narrows the path. Okay? Narrow is the path. It's a fire on one side and deep waters on the other side. Okay, you going you going uh um uh, you gonna tip over a little bit, man. But hey, Yahweh Shimi Shah give us that balance, okay, to continue to walk, walk that narrow path, man. Okay, because the scriptures say if it was if if it was broad enough, everyone would be able to make it. Okay, but no, the Lord made it that way on purpose because He don't want everybody to make it. Because the scriptures say. That the world to come is made for few. Okay? That few is the elect. Okay? The elect that Yahweh Shimei Shah. That the Lord chose from the foundation of the world. Okay? So, come. <clears throat> Verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Right? So, hey. Gold is tried in the fire, man. So, just know that. When you go through certain things, that's just the Lord trying your faith and trying your patience, man. Because what, what does patience mean in the scripture? Patience means to suffer, man. You got to suffer for a moment, man. You suffer for a moment and you be strengthened in your last hand. Okay? All right? So, kind, you know, I had to get that, you know, for edification's sake, so lock you. So, let's go ahead and get the first precept of this lesson. Book of, uh, I think it's 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter six and verse twelve, and it says, <clears throat> "I'm gonna start at verse 11. Uh It says, "But thou, O man, man of God, flee these things, that and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness." Right, there go that word patience. Okay, and we're gonna go into the word. Uh, let's get the blue letter. Blue letter. Kind of, kind of blue letter. First, Tim, look the six and five. Oh, six and eleven. Shalaki. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, let's get the. Hold on. Had to make sure my mic was on. Salakia. I know the Salakia. Salakia. For, for that. Okay. Let's get the. Strong's G5281. Upamane. Upamane. Okay. So the Greek word for the, for the word patience is hupamane. Okay. And when you go to the outline, it says steadfastness, constant, const, const, constancy, salakia, <laughs> salakia, <laughs> endurance. In the New Testament, the characteristics of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to the faith and piety but by even the greatest trials and sufferings. Right. So, hey, that's what it means to be patient, to suffer. Okay. Patiently steadfastly a patient steadfast waiting a patient enduring sustaining perverness okay so kind you know so i'm gonna reread that you know and it says in a new t in the new testament the characteristics of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose what is our deliberate purpose man to uh to preach this word man okay to have have faith in something that the, the, the world cannot see Okay, we have faith in Yahweh Shimei Asha. We have faith that Yahweh Asha is go coming back. Okay, we have faith that Yahweh Asha died on the cross for is only Israel and gave us remission for sins, and He's coming back to save His His people. Okay, we have faith in that. Okay, all right, and that's our deliberate purpose. And it says. 
deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by the by even the greatest trials and sufferings. So it's more of a like, hey, don't no matter what we go through, we still gonna have faith in Yahweh Shimi Al Shah, man. Okay? Because when Job went through what he went through, what did Job say? Let's go ahead and get this gun. Though he slay me. This is Job chapter 13 and verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my maintain so like it, maintain my own ways before him. Let's get this in the NLT. And it says, God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I am going to argue my case with him. So kind, so you know, hey, though he slay me, I was yet will I trust in him. So, hey, when Yahweh Shemi Hashem put us through things, man, we will still have faith in him because, hey, he only doing it to chastise us, to whoop us for the wrong we did. Because, hey, if you want to be technical, even we all were the adept of the shit that we done in the world, man. And guess what? The Lord had mercy on us, man, to be called into this truth and to get a second chance, man, okay, to get it so we can get it right, okay? So we can get it right this time, go around, man. Okay. Okay. This is the whole purpose of that. We banned her multiple times and we fucked up multiple times, man. Okay. We, we and it's like, man, we, we came into the truth. We trying to make sure we make our call in an election. Sure. Because we, we fucked up, man. Okay. We, we, we did some shit that we wasn't supposed to be doing. Okay. But the Lord gave us a second chance, man. That's called mercy. Okay. All right. Okay, so kind, kind, so like you. Let's go ahead and back into this. Uh, verse 12, this is the point. And it says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Right, so hey, fight the good fight. Fight the good fight of faith, man, okay? This is what we are doing, okay? We are fighting the good fight of faith. We trying to stand, be steadfast and hold on to something that is that is good, okay? Because this is a good profession, okay? We are st stacking up our spiritual bank within the heavens, okay? Because we are laying up our treasures in heavens, okay? We trying to preach this word so, hey, we can only wake up the elect, man, okay? Because this truth is not for everyone, okay? So don't be feeling bad when your, your mother don't get it, when your father don't get it, when your cousin don't get it, your favorite cousin at that, you know, because, <laughs> you know, Jake like to have favorite cousins and stuff, but every cousin cool as hell, but you do got your fucked up cousins, but, you know, need, that's neither here or there. Don't expect your wife to get it. Don't expect, uh, you know, your granny to get it, your grandpa, all that, man. We that, that that stuff right there doesn't matter. We only here for the elect. Now, are there some people, some brothers that's blessed to have the whole family woken up and enlightened? That that's hey, that's that's beautiful, man. But hey, most cases, hey, ten out of ten, hey, it's not like that for every every brother. Okay, it's not like that for every sister. Okay, where everyone is in the truth in the same household. Okay, that's rare. Okay. But kind of, so you know, this is a good profession, man. Because at the end of the day, these jobs that we working here, man, man, we we ain't getting no good benefit off this shit, but a damn paycheck, man, to sustain the fleshly needs, man. But no, we need spiritual needs more than fleshly needs, man. God, you know. Um. Kind, kind. So let's sit on that. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get the book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 10. 6, 10 through 18, kind, kind. And the reason it says, <clears throat> Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right, so hey, when warriors want to go to war, do they go out to war without uh any armor on, or they just go to war just as they are? They go out in a regular t shirt, you know, and some damn cargo shorts with a damn sword in their hand and just get fucking slaughtered. Okay? 
No, you got to put on armor so you'll be able to be protected against your enemy. Okay, so an arrow won't pierce you in your shoulder. Okay, piercing in your leg, pierce, piercing in your head. Okay, a protection layer. Okay, and that's what um, this is basically get into a spiritual armor. Okay, because we got to put on these armors because hey, we dealing with a uh 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 we we dealing with the principalities of the darkness here, man. Okay, the rulers of darkness in this world right now, man, and they rule nothing. They they rule in darkness and wickedness, man. Okay, and we got to put on the armor of God to be protected from them because hey. Their, their 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 philosophies, their way of living is all around trying to attack us. And we got to be able to have that armor to be able to have that layer of, of protection on to defend us, man. Okay? And having faith. Okay? So, kind of verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Kind of. So, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness. Right. Who are the rulers of darkness? These damn Edomites. These are, uh, these banker elites. Your Rothschilds, your Rockefellers, you know, and the other families that we never heard of. Okay. Because, hey, there's families out here that we never heard of that's up there too, man. Okay. But them the main ones we know. You know, brothers probably know more than me, but them only two I really know for real, for real. You know, Salakia. <laughs> but... You know, we wrestling against their, uh, the elites here, man, okay? And their ways of living and the things they promote. And we got to put on the armor of God so we can be protected from their ways of living, man, okay? Okay? Okay, and it says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to, to withstand in the evil day, Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded with the, about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the all, all the fiery darts of the wicked. Kind and this one thing I know about shields, man. <laughs> yeah, you you can have the sword, you know, but hey, that shield. Man, that shield, man, I'm telling you, I, I, I used to play video games where you can hit somebody with the shield and the shield do more damage to the, than the shit, than the uh, sword, you know, you can actually get, you can kill somebody with the shield, man, you know, because you hit them dead in the head with it, hey, you can give them brain damage, you can break their skull, you know. And that's why it says having the shield of faith, because, hey, that shield is a powerful defensive an offensive thing, man. Because you can use the shield for a defense and an offense. Offense, man. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> you know, that's one thing you get, you got to, you know, for those that are new to the truth, that's, you know, kind sure brothers probably know that you can use the shield for offense and defense, man. Because guess what? We have faith that Yahweh Bashim Yasha is going to fight for us and defend us, man. Okay? That's having faith in him, man. We know he's going to fight for us and defend us in the evil day. God. Verse um, <clears throat> 17. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplicant, supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto all perverseness and supplication for all saints. Right. So, hey. This is why, you know, you got to put on the whole armor of God because, hey, that's one way to make sure you uh, remain as strong in this truth, man. Okay? You, you, you armored up, man. Okay? You ready, to, you ready to go into war and you ready to go to, go to this, this spiritual war, man. Okay? Because, hey, this, this world right here is, is, is ran by nothing but wickedness and folly, man. Okay? That's all this place offers, man. Nothing but wickedness and folly, okay? There's nothing really here to really be glad and happy about, man, okay? Come on, so that's it on that. Lord, will this lesson be edifying to those that watch? Uh, let's go ahead and get the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 11. And I think I probably read this at the start of the lesson. <laughs> But kind, you know, hey, that's how the spirit works. You know, kind, I already read half of it. 
But, um, you know, let's get 6 through 11. Okay. So it says, you know, we back in the book. You know, this is Sirach chapter 2 and verse 6 through 11. And it says, believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Right. So, hey, who you have to have your trust and faith in? Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shah. Them, 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 them two omnipotent beings going to get us through these situations. Okay. All right. Verse 7. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. Because if you don't, if you don't fear the Lord, then that's you. You don't have that healthy fear. You don't have that healthy fear, and ye fall. You become weak. Okay, you become weak. You become vulnerable for all sorts of attacks. Your armor is becoming brittle. It starts uh, tipping away. It starts falling off. Okay. Okay. Come on. Verse eight. Ye that fear the Lord, believe on him, and ye and your reward shall not fail. What is the re ultimate reward? Getting beamed up in the chariot and being part of the first fruits, man. Okay? Being part of the first fruits, seeking, getting salvation, man. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 9. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see did every in did every any trust in the Lord and was Salakia trust in the Lord and was confounded or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken or whom did whom did he ever despise that call upon him look at the account of Abraham okay Abraham had faith that if he did what the Lord asked him to do that his son would be brought back further proven that Abraham knew about reincarnation. Okay. You know, and you read all the other accounts how the Lord delivered our people out of situations, okay? How much more us, you know, when when all hell break loose, okay? Brothers can share testimonies about them getting delivered from the uh hands of the devil, okay? Getting out of situation, getting free, getting stuff free, you know. People paying stuff for them, man, because the Lord putting the spirit down on them to do such things, man. Kind, man. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 11, it says, uh, uh, For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long-suffering long and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. Kind, kind. So, you know, that's it on that. You know, well, let me get verse 12. OK, woe be it to woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and sinners that go two ways. Right. So destruction to, upon those that uh, are fearful hearts and faint hearted, man. OK, because the Lord said, faint, hey, hey, that, that for you men, that that faint heart shit makes you look effeminate. And the Lord said, effeminate men not going to make it. OK. And the scripture also say, uh, 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 unfaithful should die in their unfaithfulness, man. Okay? You, you, you toss your shield down, man. You, 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 you toss your ultimate layer of protection down for what reason? You will, man, so, man don't, talk, don't throw your shield down, man. That's like the stupidest thing you can do. Okay? Verse uh, 13. Woe unto them... Woe well, unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Right. So if you are faint-hearted, you are you you scared, you, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. It's gonna be some moments where you might get a little, little you know, a little scared. But at the end of the day, you gotta play in your head that Yahweh Shemiel Shah is gonna lead us through it. He's gonna get me through this, okay? You gotta remember that. You, that's why the scriptures say wisdom and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Okay. Uh, verse 13, verse 14, and it says, Woe unto you that had lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Right. Woe unto you that lost patience. You ain't, you ain't want to suffer no more. You just like, man, I'm going to avenge myself, man. I'm going to take things into my own arms. You can't do that, man. You can't rush, you can't rush the Lord, man. You can't rush him. You ain't going to be defended. Okay? You're just going to be left out there to die. Okay? All right.
Kellen, that's it on that. Let's <clears throat> go ahead and get one more precept on sun and off. Lord was is less edifying. So like it for being long winded. Okay. Let's go ahead. The first Peter, second Peter chapter three and verse eight through nine. And the reason it says, but beloved, be not ignorant. Oh, so like it. Nope. Yeah, that's, let me make sure this is the right one. Yep. Okay, this is uh first second Peter chapter three and verse nine. And it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Uh, I'm going to start get verse 8. And it says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us were not willingly that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Right, so hey, the Lord is long suffering, man. He gonna put you through trial and error, man. Okay? So he can sharpen you up, man. Okay? So he can sharpen you up, man. So you can be that fine polished gold. Okay, that's worth and value. That that value goes up. Okay? Because you are polished, you are you are made clean. You got all the impurities as in your sins out of you, man. They've been abolished out of you, man. Okay? You you've been buffed. You've been buffed out. Okay? So kind. You know, so with that, Lord willing this less edifying to you, Akim and Aquathium that watch. You know, so with that, I'd like to give our honor and our glory and our praise due to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in the name of Yahweh, by Shem, Yahushah, by Shem, Kwakadash. Double on square minutes to add our possible teaching from well. Peace, salutations to the hopeful elect that scattered abroad. Till next time, to this video, Shalom.